I want to talk about Sean, but uh, what you brought up about the offense, for the most part, I agree with Les. Um, obviously, only two significant, and I don't even think they're significant. Well, maybe, maybe Isaac. I think mm -hmm. replacing Isaac Samala is going to be a yeah. bigger problem yeah. than people think. But I think they're going to be fine at running back. Um, and I think Brian Johnson and I is a very good coach, and I think people saw him and he handled himself well. But I got to tell you, there was a pretty significant difference between Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen when it came to play calling. I think there's a feel yeah. to it. And and Brian, by the way, I asked him that question. He said, yeah, it's part science, part art, I think he called it. And I, I yeah. like those uh, phrases. And I think Shane was really good at it. Okay. Uh, really good at it. And I think the assignment, and, and that's why I bring up Nick. I think he's better at it than Nick, to be mm -hmm. honest. It's Nick's offense, as you mentioned but I think Shane's a better play caller. I think we've already seen that. So I asked you, Les Bowen, why is it the assumption that, oh, the play calling is going to be just as good with Brian Johnson? I still need to see that. Yeah, I guess I need to see it. I, I don't, I, I didn't feel that strongly as you did about it with, with Steichen, but yeah, you could, I'm, I'm sure you're probably right. Um, I think Nick's had some time now I, we saw Nick as a play caller when he was very new to head coaching and the job. And Steichen did it for the last year and a half. I would hope Nick, Nick seems like a pretty bright guy. I would hope maybe he got a better feel during that time for what they need to do and how they need to do it. And uh, I just think, you know, Jalen Hurts is so far advanced now mentally and, and emotionally as a quarterback. I think he can provide a lot of input there. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't see that as a problem, but it could be, I mean, sure it could be. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see that's, that's a point that I hadn't really probably thought nearly enough about, but, uh, yeah, it's, there is a lot of change. I mean, that's, uh, and, and you want to see change when you, when you end up runner up, you know, you don't come back with the same hand for the next yeah. season, <laughs> you know, that doesn't ever work. And the whole runner up thing, in fact, is very problematic, you know, for historically for teams going into the next year, it's tough. And uh, that's something they're going to have to get back, get around and, you know, work through. Uh, Les, uh, John and I are both fans of CEO head coaches, John, even more so than me. Um, I would prefer to have a CEO head coach if I got a good coach and he wants to call plays the offensive team. I'm not going to not hire him because he doesn't do it a CEO way, but uh, I do ge generally agree with John and his philosophy. CEO coaches are in a better position to coach the entire team than a guy who's going to bother himself with calling plays. Uh, we know that Nick turned to that a quarter of the way to season number one and the success of the Eagles has only grown since. So he'll be a CEO coach again this year. The first two years, it was with Jonathan Gannon in the position on the defensive side of the ball, mm -hmm. and it seemed to guys like John, yourself, who covered the team, and even us from afar, that he went pretty much hands-off. That it was Gannon's defense. He let Gannon mm -hmm. do whatever he wanted. He wasn't over looking over the shoulder at Gannon and uh, continually talking to him on game days while plays are being called. Do you think Sean Desai is treated the same way from day one? He's new. He was mm -hmm. Nick's hire, and Nick has spoke glowingly of him. But when they get there on the field for the first game of the regular season, do you think that Desai is given the same reign over his defense that Gannon did going out the door? Well, I sure hope so, because Nick isn't a defensive guy. And I think that's the – one of his talents is – uh, knowing what he knows and knowing what he doesn't know and not trying to, to do things that he's not good at. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of think it was that way from day one with Gannon and Gannon didn't have any great uh, background as a defensive coordinator that <laughs> he had never been a defensive coordinator, you know? So I, I got to think that it will be that way from day one. I sure hope it is because I don't think we want Nick, uh, you know, really inserting himself on that side of the ball too much other than as an emotional leader, as a, you know, 
as the guy who presides over things. I don't think you want Nick's – I don't much want to see Nick's defensive strategies because I don't think he has them. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, I, I just hope he does leave Sean Desai alone. I, I don't see a lot of difference between his hire and Gannon's hire in terms of, you know, Nick was involved, Nick – Nick signed off on it. Uh, it I, I, I would imagine it'll be Desai pretty much. Uh, and, the, and the leaders, the veteran leaders of the defense who set the tone. Now, the scheme is going to be a big thing defensively, as you know, Les. Mm-hmm. And in theory, I mean, they're not going to change the base philosophy. You mentioned Nick is not a defensive guy. I agree with you. He sort of understands that. But he has those broad rules, and it starts with, what he calls the double positive. So he wants to win the explosive play battle and he wants to win uh, the turnover Turnover. battle. Um, And the explosive play is, I think the problematic part for Eagles fans because they like aggression. And then, you know, we all know this, we've been around this team for a long time. Uh, They want blitzing and they want a, a certain, and that's where I think Sean Desai hit a home run using the terms like palpable and saying we want we want you to feel this defense and talking about toughness and grittiness i think he did a, he hit a home run we lost less hopefully we get him back so from your perspective jody i think he hit a home run but i don't think it's all that meaningful if we're using the same philosophy and same scheme he's going to have the same issues jonathan gannon has Hopefully he's better situationally, at least in the fan base's mind. Or is it just as simple as paying the lip service and saying the right things? Because I think he was already good at saying the right things. You were, I, I, you, I cut out for a little bit of that. I think I got the gist of what you said, John. But uh, I, I really think – I don't think there was that much wrong with Gannon's scheme. It just didn't adjust well. He didn't – if something happened – as we saw in the Super Bowl, when the Chiefs scored touchdowns on the same play, run to the other side, you know, it. There has to be an, an somebody has to understand what's going on there and not let it happen another time. You know, I, I that was my problem with Gannon. I didn't think his scheme was flawed so much. The scheme is one, as you know, that it's, that a lot of people use now. Yes, and uh, I would argue know, too many. Yeah, as as because then you have that tipping point, right? Last we saw it with cover two and Tony Dungy. Yeah. We saw it with cover three and Pete Carroll. You always have this tipping point. Oh, big big defense works. Let's copy that. Yeah, and then all the quarterbacks see it every week and they figure it out. That's exactly right. If you see it all the time, it's a lot easier to play against than it yeah. than it is when it's brand new. But uh, you know, I don't think there's any reason to think the scheme is going to be real bad, but I think uh, I just want to see, and I think the fans want to see, the ability to adjust, the ability to to look at something that didn't work and figure that out instead of just standing there watching it, you know, again and again, watching Andy Dalton complete 14 passes in a row or something, you know. I mean, I, you know, that just doesn't have to happen, I don't think. And uh, I think that's what I'm looking for from Sean Desai more than anything else, really. All right. 